Hello, everybody. I'm Dana Lyons here with the Cows with Guns report. And uh, I am thrilled to be here in Kauai with my friend uh, Rich Hepner. Rich and Judy live in a beautiful house. We're looking over the, is it the Wailua? Wailua River Valley. The Wailua River Valley. Yeah. And it's uh, quite warm. It's, it's February. And uh, I asked Rich to, uh, to tell us the story of uh, the Super Ferry. And uh, Rich comes originally from Iowa, isn't that right? And, That's correct. And uh, Rich has, uh, grew up on a farm, and I know you've worked as a dairy farmer, a truck driver, a police officer, many things. I've done a lot of, a lot of different <laughs> jobs, yeah. <laughs> Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> and I, I met Rich and Judy coming to Kauai to play here for the Vegetarian Society, and they uh, very graciously uh, put me up in their home. And uh, it was funny because I wanted to, when I came to Kauai, I wanted to meet uh, people working on Hawaiian land rights issues, and uh, people who had worked uh, on the the super ferry issue. And Rich and Judy have worked on both of those issues, so it was like one stop shopping. So I landed well. But uh, uh, Rich, uh, <clears throat> tell us, you know, tell us, uh, like some folks don't even know what the super ferry wa was, but tell. Tell them a little bit what it is and how the people of Kauai uh, rose up and stopped it. Okay, a little background. Um, the ex-Secretary of the Navy, John Lehman, decided he wanted a, an inter-island ferry. Well, his motive was to get a military contract for Austal Corporation that built the ferry. So uh, there was some talk about an inter-island ferry, and then all of a sudden... Uh, they're holding hearings here on our island. And I went to one of the hearings and found out that the $140 million loan had been made to them to build the ferries. Uh, the, the state had invested $40 million in changing our docks to uh, accommodate the ferry. And it was pretty much a done deal. They said, we're coming. Uh, there was no environmental impact statement. And I thought, you know... This just isn't right. So uh, the next meeting, I told the people at the meeting that I hope they didn't expect to have a say in it because it was a done deal. And then it just came to me that I would start a uh, petition for the county or the state or federal to demand an environmental impact statement before they docked on, at Nawilly Willie here on our island. And immediately there was response. People came around and says, where's your petition? I want to sign that. And I said, well, I just thought of it. I haven't got it written up yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote up a petition, and we got over 6,000 signatures here on the island to stop the ferry from coming here until they got an environmental impact statement. And how many people live on the island? Well, these, we've got 60,000 people, but 10%. We, we, we got these, <laughs> these signatures in no time at all. And I ended up uh, testifying at the state legislature in Honolulu. Uh, I gave a lot of television appearances saying why we should get an environmental impact statement. Uh, I was on the radio. There was newspaper articles, and um, um, it really worked out well because eventually... Um, Governor Lingle started a, they called it Act 2. It was a bill that would have bypassed state law and gave the ferry everything they wanted. So we went to court, and the Supreme Court said Act 2 was unconstitutional. Well, it just so happened that Austal got the contract with the military to build some of these boats, and... Super Ferry immediately shut down and went bankrupt, and there's something like sixty-three million dollars it cost the state. So um, it was flawed from the very get-go, and um, we won. We we not only beat uh, John Lehman, uh, Bush was behind this, uh, Cheney was behind it, uh, Rumsfeld was behind it, and we had a big victory when. Um, when this happened and the first time they came here to the island 
we had probably 500 people on the jetty and uh, 10, 15 people out on uh, surfboards. And they got through and docked. So the next night they came, we had 1,500 people on the jetty. We had probably 50 or 60 people out on surfboards blocking the ferry. And there was one picture of this huge ferry that was like three stories high, a football field long. And here was this huge ferry with one guy on a surfboard out in front of it. And that made the front page of the New York Times. <laughs> and we held them off for three hours. And finally, the ferry turned around and went back to Honolulu without docking. And that's the last we ever saw of them. <laughs> so we beat them. I mean, we beat them big time. <laughs> the surfers turned around the ferry and the people yeah. of Kauai. And it was not only the surfers. Uh, we have several canoe clubs with six-man canoes that canoe all around the island. And I, I cried when this happened. <laughs> I was so impressed and so overwhelmed. Here came a couple of the canoes right in front of the ferry <laughs> went down and turned around and came back across in front of the ferries there was no place for the ferry to go and they finally turned around and went back to honolulu now they um they continued operation uh to maui and the ceo of austal said with this size ferry that was totally ridiculous they said they would require 450 passengers per trip to break even. And the last month of operation, they averaged 106 passengers per trip. And this is a ferry that holds 850 passengers. And people were getting seasick. I mean, it was a joke, a total joke. It was never meant to be an inner island ferry. Now, there's... Um, Kuhan Paik wrote a book called The Super Fairy Chronicles. And when I read the book, I told Kuhan, one word describes this book. It's truth. Because it described what happened, the whole process, from the very day they had the meetings to the final chapter. This book told the story just as it was. And it's a great book. And the, the Super Fairy would have had you know, serious potential environmental impacts for Kauai because the, the Hawaiian Islands, there's a lot of exotic species. And like, I know yeah. you don't have the mongoose here. Like, what were you threat? What was Kauai threatened with if you had cars driving on to the island? Well, first of all, the ferry was a drive on, drive off. It hauled vehicles, it hauled passengers. And if they had come here, we don't have the mongoose. We don't have uh, fire ants. We don't have the koki frogs. Um, these vehicles could have brought anything onto our island. And it would have been, we have an incredible bird population. And with mongoose on our island, the bird population would be total history. So it had incredible environmental impacts. And they absolutely refused to get an environmental impact statement. Now, the Supreme Court also said they were required to do that. And they continued operation without one. So they were totally illegal. Uh, what the governor did was illegal. Um, the whole thing was a farce from the very beginning. And uh, the people of Kauai and the surfers and the canoeists stopped the super ferry. And the super ferry is out of business here on Hawaii. And now people who are watching this may be wondering about all the birds we're hearing. I know we've got your little <laughs> bird back here, Punky, and you're hearing a lot of chickens that uh, Tell us uh, where all these birds are. I wake up every morning very early with uh, about listening to about 100 roosters. How did that come about here, Rich? Well, we had a, um, a hurricane back in 91. And some of the native people here had uh, Polynesian gamecocks. And a lot of those got loose. And we now have a bird population, a chicken population here on the island that I just love. They are totally unique birds. Uh, I've got one out here in the backyard I call Growler. He's a pet. Uh, he follows me around the yard, 
and I feed him, and uh, he talks to me. He growls, and <laughs> he's a totally unique bird. In oh, fact, he, he he he's right outside our deck here right now, <laughs> and uh, he pretty much hangs close to me, and um, he's a pet. <laughs> so uh, we've got a lot of chickens here on the island, and I just love them. It reminds me of being back in Iowa when I was a kid. We always had chickens around. Well, I've got chickens here on Kauai. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> now, Rich, before uh, Rich has, Rich Hepner has graciously uh, agreed to sing us a song. But before we do that. Uh, one last question. Uh, back home where I live in Bellingham, Washington, we're struggling to stop a, a coal train from coming through our town. They want to ship billions of tons of coal from Wyoming and Montana through and over to China. And you, the peop- you and the people here on Kauai were successful coming up against these giant forces to stop the... Uh, the super ferry. I wondered, you know, we're, we're about the same population in Bellingham as Kauai. I wonder if you have any advice for a small town going through a similar struggle. You bet. The whole thing is about spreading the awareness of what's happening. A lot of people in Bellingham probably are not aware of the details of what this, this coal and this, this train could result in. And what we did... Um, in getting the petitions, we spread the awareness of what was happening. And if you can spread the awareness and get enough people aware of what that train will do, people will come together and you'll beat it. So spread the awareness. Right on. <laughs> we'll get to work on that. All right, Rich, you got a tune for us? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this... What started this whole thing with me was the love of this island. This island is just incredible. Anybody that can do it should take a vacation here. There's an energy here, and it's all about love. And there's this song that a friend of mine wrote. Surrender to love, surrender to healing. Surrender to grace, surrender to faith, surrender to love. Thank you, Rich. That was beautiful. (laughs) Rich Hepner, one of the many people on Kauai who worked hard to stop the super ferry. Thank you, Dana. Thanks, Rich.